Online at WSMVCost.com. Breakup. A federal judge orders Microsoft split into two. What's next and how will it affect you? We'll ask Bill Gates live in our exclusive interview. In depth, the surprise about what Americans really think of their health plans. And medical tests at the mall. Not just blood pressure anymore. The controversy over CAT scans and cancer tests on demand. Sold, but did you pay too much? Why the FBI is investigating online auctions. And State of the Union, why does the government want to keep your marriage together? From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Substituting tonight, Katie Curry. Good evening, everyone. In a historic ruling, the likes of which haven't been seen since AT&T was broken up almost 20 years ago, a federal judge tonight made it official, ordering the world's biggest computer software maker, Microsoft, to be split into two separate companies. Microsoft will appeal the decision. Chairman Bill Gates is standing by at his company's headquarters in Redmond, Washington, to give us his view in just a moment. But we're going to begin in Washington, and we should point out NBC has a business relationship with Microsoft, the cable network MSNBC. Pete Williams begins our coverage. It's a huge legal victory tonight for the Justice Department, more than a year and a half after hauling Microsoft into federal court and a potentially crippling blow to one of the inventors of the high-tech economy. Judge Thomas Penfield Jackson gives the government virtually everything it asked for, ordering that the world's dominant computer software maker be split in two. The court's order today is the right remedy for Microsoft's serious and repeated violations of the antitrust laws. How would it work? What's now Microsoft would become two separate companies, one to handle only Windows and other operating software, the other to make and sell all other computer software and products. But the judge rejects calls from outside groups to split the company up even more into three pieces. Anyone now owning more than 5% of Microsoft's stock could own shares in only one of the two new companies, a provision aimed directly and only at company founder Bill Gates. And even before any breakup, Microsoft would be required to give computer makers more freedom in marketing its products. Predicting severe economic damage to the computer industry if the company is actually broken up, Microsoft vows to fight on appeal. We will file the uh, notice of appeal and stay just as soon as possibly a matter of a very few days. And some antitrust experts predict the appeals courts will be reluctant to call for such drastic surgery. Enough of Judge Jackson's opinion is going to be set aside. Maybe not all of it, but enough of it is going to be set aside that we're not going to see the day when a court mandates the reorganization of Microsoft. But the Justice Department says it will push to appeal the case directly to the U.S. Supreme Court, bypassing a federal appeals court. This is exactly the sort of case where there's a great virtue of having the final court that's going to get it eventually, if it wants it, make a decision and get on with the remedy, which is designed, the Justice Department says, to make American consumers better off. The appeals courts must decide who's right about regulating future computer innovation, the government with its limited technical knowledge, or Microsoft, which today's ruling says doesn't play fair. Pete Williams, NBC News, Washington. Joining me now from Microsoft headquarters in Redmond, Washington, is founder and chairman Bill Gates. Mr. Gates, good evening. Thanks for joining us. Good evening. The government has contended that competition breeds more creativity and more ideas. So will consumers be the ultimate winners here? Well, Microsoft was started 25 years ago with the idea that we could make computers a tool for everyone. And throughout these 25 years, the price of computing, the price of software has come down. Now, the rules that we've been operating under are that a company is allowed to design its own products in an innovative way. The government's attacked that, saying that we cannot support the Internet and Windows. That's different than the rules have been. We think it's bad for consumers, and that's why we feel in, in the next round of this case, in a higher court, we will prevail. You obviously want a speedy resolution to this case. Considering your shareholders, considering your employees and the public, why not go straight to the Supreme Court as the government has proposed? Well, it's really up to the Supreme Court to decide if it wants to take this case. Whichever higher court takes it, 
the precedents that have been established where the courts don't do the design and extreme things like taking away all the intellectual property that we've created, you know, that's unprecedented and, and I don't think either of the courts that might have it next will uphold it. You have said that you believe today's ruling will be overturned. Are you hoping the appeals process will drag on and that George W. Bush will be elected and his administration might be more sympathetic to Microsoft? The sooner we can get a higher court to rule, the better off we're going to be. Uh, we're a company that comes in every day and thinks about software, and having this behind us uh, would be a great thing. Having a federal judge find you guilty of violating antitrust laws and a call and calling for the company you built to be split in two, do you think this has tarnished your personal reputation? Well, this is the same judge who ruled against us in a consent decree case, and he was quite harsh in that case as well. Everything that he ruled then was thrown out by the appeals court. In fact, uh, that's where the appeals court made it very clear that it was up to Microsoft to do the software design, not the courts. Uh, we're disappointed in the ruling, but this case was always going to be decided by a higher court. All right. Bill Gates, thank you very much. Thank you. For more now on what this could mean for the economy and consumers, here's NBC's chief financial correspondent, Mike Jensen. With the breakup of the company that has created more than $360 billion in stockholder wealth actually make shockwaves big enough to damage the U.S. economy, as some have claimed, most analysts say no. I think the economy's growth will continue and will continue fairly robustly. So what would be changed by a breakup of Microsoft? Computer experts say in time there'd be hundreds of new products from competing companies. For people like Chris Pace and his daughters, shopping today for a new computer. If there's a breakup, somewhere down the line, you're likely to see more different choices for software that you run on your PC. Analysts say past antitrust actions have been good for consumers, going all the way back to John D. Rockefeller and the breakup of the Standard Oil Company, which created more competition, lower prices for oil, the AT&T breakup, setting off a wave of innovation, competition, cutting some long-distance prices in half. I do agree with the judgment. I think it's a good one, and I think it will benefit consumers. And what about Microsoft's three million stockholders? How would a breakup affect them? They've seen the stock plunge from $120 a share all the way down to 70 in just five months. What now? By this time next summer, get above the prior highs of 120, maybe reaching $130 a share. That's if Microsoft wins on appeal. But at this point, everyone's guessing, as Microsoft's competitors relish the prospect of the industry giant cut in half. Mike Jensen, NBC News, New York. As for the rest of Wall Street today, the Dow finished up a little more than 77 points. The Nasdaq was also up almost 83 points. Up next, drive-by health care, NBC News in-depth. Medical tests coming to a mall near you. Our goal is to really help people live longer. And we think that the consumer, the baby boomer, is shifting to very aggressive, proactive management of their life. Medical tests on demand, but is this really the best medicine? Tonight's in-depth and online auctions. Are the prices being driven up illegally? The latest on an investigation by the FBI. So we need rice. We don't get regular rice. I want whole grain brown rice. Oh, and cereal. But only if it has extra fiber. Around here, we're particular about what we eat. So we love that Kraft has these taste-of-life dressings. They're made with vitamin E and unsaturated oils like canola. Bend over. Second shelf. Guess Kraft just knows eating better doesn't have to be complicated. Free-range pork. <laughs> Around here, the dressing is Kraft Taste of Life. Do something fun today. Kick back. Eat with your fingers at Red Lobster. Luscious peel-and-eat shrimp. All you can eat for only $11.99. But hurry, because this mouth-watering offer ends soon. The steering is precise. The handling is controlled. The owner is obsessed. 
The remarkably agile, entirely new 2001 Aurora by Oldsmobile. Ordinary cat? Feed him ordinary cat food. Real tiger. Feed him the real meat and friskies. It's the nutrition your cat naturally hungers for. Everything he needs to be his best. Friskies. Did you know your Aleve works on headaches, too? When my wife got bad headaches, the pain relievers she tried, they'd work for a while, then quit. So she'd have to take more. You could see she was hurting. I had some Aleve for my arthritis pain, so she tried it. Now she's got her life back, and I've got her back. Aleve can stop so many kinds of pain all day with just two pills. It would take eight Excedrin to do that. Thanks, Aleve, for making such a difference. Dateline Wednesday, a young woman disappears without a trace. It was fear. I was scared to death. Her boyfriend is charged with murder, but can prosecutors convict him with no weapon and no body? There's more witnesses to support that she's alive than there are that she's dead. What really happened to Carrie? A Dateline Court TV exclusive tonight, 8, 7 central. NBC News in depth. Tonight, the quality of your health plan. Even as Congress is locked in an impasse over a health care bill of rights, a new study shows many Americans are actually happy with their health plans. The study by Consumer Reports and the Kaiser Family Foundation finds about 90% of those surveyed rate their plans from excellent to average. But more than 50% admit to having a problem with their coverage in the last year. What is the state of your health care? NBC's Lisa Myers begins tonight's in-depth reporting. That half of Americans have some problem with their health plan is no surprise to Lisa Woodhouse. She says her HMO first failed to diagnose her son Ryan's serious immune system disorder, then wouldn't pay for the treatment with the best record of success. It was very stressful with Ryan being sick and then having our health plan not support us. Um, it was pretty bad. She decides to pay for a bone marrow transplant herself because it's an emergency. Later, she says the state intervenes and makes her HMO pay some of the cost. The teapot. Despite Woodhouse's experience, today's report finds that 64% of Americans give their health plan an A or a B. Those most likely to have problems, the sick. 60% of those in fair or poor health report troubles. The biggest problems, delays or denial of care, difficulty seeing a doctor, and payment disputes. These results are not good news for consumers. It instead gives a clear answer to why there is a crisis of consumer confidence in health care right now. Critics say that it's no coincidence that those who get sick and need care report major problems with their HMO. As a result of not providing the care, their bottom line is enhanced. That's wrong. That's fundamentally wrong. We can do something about it, and this Congress has to do something about it. In fact, both the House and Senate approved bills almost a year ago to give patients new rights in dealing with their HMOs. But tonight, no compromises in sight, meaning the bills could die for the year. And I think that there are a lot of people that are going to be very upset if we don't get the job done. Few more upset than Woodhouse, who says Ryan's doing great, but she's still fighting her HMO over each new set of bills, an all too common symptom of what ails health care today. Lisa Myers, NBC News, the Capitol. What if you could bypass your insurance company, even your doctor, and simply order up your own battery of medical tests and do it at your local mall? NBC's Robert Hager continues our in-depth reporting with a look at the controversy over health care on demand. It's the fast food of physicals, a new screening center in a strip of offices and shops on the edge of Jacksonville, Florida. The machine will talk to you now. We're going to get started. It offers 28 separate tests, from CAT scans to blood work to screen for cancer, heart disease, osteoporosis, and more. Up to $1,600 if you order everything, and takes less than two hours. Okay. But centers like this that offer tests without the recommendation of a patient's physician, and with only one doctor on staff to explain results, are controversial. And normally, insurance won't pay. So this is aimed at those with enough money to spend on such random screening, even without signs of any real health problems. Translation, aimed at aging baby boomers, says its co-founder, Fred Fay. Our goal is to really help people live longer. And we think that the consumer, the baby boomer, is shifting to very aggressive, proactive management of their life. This day, 40-year-old restaurateur Mark Nelms is having a CAT scan of his heart and lungs and other tests. Heart 
prostate. I mean, some of these things are asymptomatic. You don't you don't have a symptom until it's too late. And uh, I'd like to be able to watch that. 45-year-old Katie Herda gets an ultrasound check of bone density to guard against osteoporosis. Pat Delaney, arteries checked and tests for cancer. I want to know if there's something inside of me that's growing. And if I come here, I'll know when it's the size of a pea, not the size of a grapefruit. The clinic's called Health Screen America, and there are plans to turn it into a national chain, joining others with names like heart scan and lifeline screening. But while the idea sounds good, why not screen if you have the money? Many medical experts point out that the tests sometimes yield false results and say even when a screening's accurate, it's often a poor predictor of whether an actual health problem will follow. Others say screening without a full doctor's workup ignores what's often the best indicator of future risk, personal and family health history. But patients like Katie Herda are convinced they're doing the right thing. You're buying peace of mind, and it's worth every penny. Controversy aside, the new centers have appeal at a time when more feel responsible for taking charge of their own health. CAT scans at the mall could be coming soon to a neighborhood near you. Robert Hager, NBC News, Washington. One more medical note tonight. It just got easier for older Americans to be on the cutting edge of medicine. President Clinton has ordered Medicare to help seniors pay the cost of taking part in clinical trials, tests of new drugs and medical treatments. Mr. Clinton says the more seniors who enroll in the trials, the sooner advances in medicine will save lives. Still ahead, our look at the family. What makes marriage last? A new study and a new approach that the government hopes can really work. I'm here to demonstrate how Whiskas' new savory nuggets with crispy outsides and soft centers compare to the typical dry cat food. Observe the difference at impact. Now ours. <coughs> Trying this again. These cats are totally ruining the experiment. New Whiskas with savory nuggets. What cats want. Love at first sight. What's that based on? Have you ever looked at someone and said, check her out, she looks loyal? Or, whoa, look at the morals on that guy. No, love at first sight is based on something else. Sight. I see you, baby. Take it in, baby. The 2000 Mitsubishi Eclipse, nicely equipped at 17.7. You'll even love what's on the inside. My dad was a coach at Georgia School for the Deaf. I grew up in an environment where deaf kids kind of adopted me in their culture. Thank all of you for coming to the camp today. When I first went to uh, Merrill Lynch, I was very impressed with Steve Malone. He was very easy to talk to, and he listened so well. So it's important for all of us to listen well and to cooperate. Every day you're building, building your future. You can buy a Gateway Essential PC with a year of AOL and a free printer for $999. Or you can buy a PC from a bargain basement company for $599. Then add a monitor, lots of software, a year of AOL, and a Canon printer and end up paying over $1,200. With Gateway, you'll get all that and you'll still end up paying $999. Which one's the real bargain? Call 1-800-GATEWAY. Featuring the Intel Celeron processor. Hey, Annie Matthews, what's on your plate today? Today's going to be great, but really busy. Ten, maybe 15 cuts. Lunch is here, Annie. I'll probably grab a quick bite when I can. Annie, your two o'clock's here. And maybe get heartburn. I used to think Tums if I'd already eaten. Not anymore. You can take Pepsid AC whenever you need it. Pepsid AC controls heartburn before, during, or even after you eat. Of course I can take you. No matter what's on your plate, today should be heartburn-free with Pepsid AC. Tomorrow and today, a mother who spent the last four years in college as her daughter's roommate. As they prepare for graduation, we'll hear their story tomorrow and today. Migraines, new ways to stop the pain. NBC Nightly News tomorrow.
An update on a story we told you about Monday, the most expensive Senate primary campaign ever in this country, the Democratic race in New Jersey. And the winner is the man who spent $34 million, by far the most ever, 30 million of it, his own money, former Goldman Sachs chief John Corzine. He beat his opponent, former Governor Jim Florio, by 16 points after outspending him by a staggering 11 to one margin. And more fallout from a story we told you about a couple of weeks ago about a man who schemed to sell an abstract painting on the internet auction site eBay exposed some very questionable practices. Now the FBI says that picture was indeed worth a thousand words. They've opened a probe of alleged fraud. Here's NBC's Ann Thompson. eBay, the largest and most successful online auction site. Today, questions raised about some of its users. The FBI opening an investigation into whether a ring of users fraudulently bid up the prices of items, violating mail and wire fraud laws. This painting launched the probe. Originally offered on eBay for just 25 cents, it sold for almost $136,000. Fueled by speculation, it is the work of the late artist Richard Diebenkorn. But eBay canceled the sale when it discovered the seller bid on his own painting. It's like uh, walking through a minefield for a novice because you have to know what you're doing on there. San Francisco art dealer Eden Hughes checks out eBay every day. He's bought 200 paintings in two years. Four, he says, were forgeries. He welcomes the FBI investigation. They certainly need someone to regulate it. But eBay makes clear in its user agreement that, quote, we have no control over the quality, safety, or legality of the items advertised. Still, some users are unhappy. The National Consumers League keeps track of complaints about all auction sites. Eighty-seven percent of the uh, complaints that we get at the Internet Fraud Watch are in online auctions. Linda Galodner, president of the National Consumers League, says most of the complaints concern failure to receive merchandise or that the item was misrepresented online. But despite all the complaints, the online auction business grows. Sales projected to double this year to $6.4 billion and scheduled for later this month, one of the largest single sales. On the block at Sotheby's.com, this rare original copy of the Declaration of Independence, expected to sell for four to six million dollars. If you can find a new buyer that you wouldn't have found in any other way, yes, then the price could be higher. But Sotheby's has its own problems, already a target of a federal investigation into price fixing at the auction house. eBay says it is cooperating with the FBI, but today made no other statement. The bottom line online continues to be fire beware. Ann Thompson, NBC News, Chicago. I'll be right back with the State of America's Unions. New information tonight on what really makes marriage work. Steering is precise. The handling is controlled. The owner is obsessed. The remarkably agile, entirely new 2001 Aurora by Oldsmobile. Sis, I snooped in your medicine cabinet. So? You switched to Exlax. Yeah, correct all works with an artificial chemical. Exlax works with natural senna. Very effectively, too. You tried it. What a find. What a snoop. Good morning, guaranteed. <gasps> Eddie, is that you? Yeah, I've come back to warn you. <clears throat> Beware the spray. The spray got you, but, but you were near the tree. It can't get you near the tree. Fools, the spray is like no other. One moment I'm fine, the next my roots are like mush. Eddie, will we be okay? I don't know. Is dead okay? Roundup kills tough weeds even near trees. Roundup, no root, no weed, no problem. Cold stuff kill you? Then try new Colgate Sensitive Maximum Strength. It's clinically proven to provide significantly more pain relief than Sensodyne. So you don't have to be afraid of anything. New Colgate Sensitive. It was awful with my overactive bladder. I was going so often. 
Then bottom of the ninth, suddenly I had to go. And that time, I had to race to the bathroom. That did it. I asked my doctor about Detro. If you live with any of these symptoms, strong, sudden urges to go, going frequently, wedding accidents, you may have overactive bladder, a medical condition. Prescription Detrol effectively treats overactive bladder. Detrol helps control bladder contractions that cause those strong, sudden urges. If you have certain types of stomach, urinary, or glaucoma problems, do not take Detrol. The most common side effect is dry mouth. Some others may include dry eyes, headache, constipation, and indigestion. Overactive bladder is a treatable medical condition, so don't wait. Ask your doctor today about Detrol, the number one brand prescribed by doctors for overactive bladder. Glad I asked my doctor about Detrol. Just ahead at 6, Nashville's new Speedway has been the center of controversy from the start. Now some of its neighbors are trying to pack up and move out. The story at 6. Also tonight, Nashville's Independent Film Festival winner could have a real shot at an Oscar. Terry Bulger has a live report coming up on The Scene at 6. Now the family love marriage divorce as American as baseball and apple pie. In fact, a new report out tonight says Americans are less likely to marry and very likely to get divorced. Now in a controversial effort to stop this trend, some state and local governments are trying their hand at marriage counseling. Here's NBC's Donna Friesen. This is the easy part, the wedding. This is my solemn vow. The hard part? Staying married, like Lisa and J.R. Eckhern. Ten years later, still together, happily, they say, despite many rough patches. Their secret? Twelve weeks of counseling, learning to deal with conflict before the wedding. Without it, they have no doubt where they'd be now. Either divorced or miserable, one of the two. One of the two. In fact, the U.S. leads the world in divorce, 1.15 million last year alone, up 30% since 1970. That's one divorce every 2.7 seconds. But now, a new unlikely force in the fight against divorce, the government. You did uh, read the Florida Law Handbook. In Florida, a tough new pro-marriage policy, the so-called look-before-you-leap law. Couples forced to take either four hours of premarital counseling or wait three days for a marriage license. Across the country, new policies for newlyweds. Arkansas's governor declaring a state of marital emergency. Wisconsin hiring a marriage policy coordinator. Oklahoma spending $10 million to study ways to reduce the divorce rate. Utah and Florida teaching marital skills in high school. What's driving lawmakers? It's simple, money. Divorce is expensive, not just for couples, but for the state. Billions of dollars just in the state of Florida. Billions spent on welfare, health care, collecting child support, lawyers, and counselors. Of course, not everyone believes government has any place walking down this aisle. Marriage has been the business of churches and clergy for generations. And now critics of all these new initiatives say it's not the role of government to be meddling in marriage. It's an insult to every free-thinking American's intelligence, and it's not the place government should be setting foot. Despite Governor Ventura's opposition, his own state just passed a pro-marriage law. In some places, like Grand Rapids, Michigan, the goal is very specific. Reduce divorce by 25% in 10 years. Judges there can now refuse to wed couples who haven't had counseling. This summer, more than 700,000 Americans will get married. It won't be just family and friends with an interest in seeing them succeed. Now, the government will be watching, too. Donna Friesen, NBC News, Jacksonville, Florida. And that's nightly news for this Wednesday. Don't forget Dateline tonight, and I'll see you tomorrow morning on Today. I'm Katie Couric. For all of us here at NBC News, good night. Nightly News is a presentation of NBC News. More Americans watch NBC News than any other news organization in the world. A Nashville daycare is forced to shut its doors after a child is sexually assaulted. 
A 12-year-old boy has pled guilty to the attack at Volte Christian Daycare. I'm Dorinda Carter. I'll have a live report coming up. And members of a Madison church are certainly counting their blessings, thankful that their young members are okay after a fiery crash in Kentucky. We'll have a live report coming up. Also, they're not very fond of their new neighbor. Now folks who live near Middle Tennessee's new Speedway have for sale signs in their yards and dollar signs in their eyes. We will tell you why. Plus, future Scorseses and Spielbergs are hoping Nashville is the last stop for Hollywood. The scene at 6 is right now. Channel 4, your number one source for news. Working for you. With Dan Miller and Demetria Kalatimos News. Rudy Kalis Sports and Bill Hall.